Before we get started using SketchUp, you'll want to reveal the large tool set. To do that, just go up to the View menu, Tool Palettes, and choose Large Tool Set. As you can see, we have a larger tool palette displayed on our left now. An important thing to know when using SketchUp is how to navigate around your 3D model. And if you look on the left hand side where the toolbar is, you can see that we have the Orbit tool, the Pan tool, and the Zoom tool. Well, actually four Zoom tools, but this Zoom tool will be the one that we use most. We have also have Zoom to Extents, Zoom to Window, and Return to your previous Zoom. Now, you don't always have to click on the toolbar to use these. There's shortcuts that you can use with your three-button mouse. To use these shortcuts, all you need to do is click and hold your scroll button down to orbit, press the shift key and click and hold to pan, and to zoom, simply scroll in with your scroll wheel and scroll out. Get used to navigating around your model. Another concept that we should talk about relating to SketchUp is how to actually start building the model. There's two different ways that I often work in. I sometimes go from general to specific. So for example, for this project, I would have started with just a rectangle that I pulled out into this 3D form and started carving away, much like a sculptor would do. Or you can build from the ground up or from one side up, you know, start on one side and work slowly to the other, which is what I'm going to be doing with this tutorial because I want the inside to be hollow and to carve out the inside once I've created a 3D form is going to be relatively difficult. So we'll be working from the ground up here. Another thing that you want is a reference next to you all the time for the measurements because you don't want to be guessing about these. And SketchUp does let you work with precise dimensions and you want to have gone through if you're working from the SketchUp example you want to have gone through and measure from the height to the length to the width to the distance in between the ribs another thing you want to look for is symmetry which we have and repeating elements which we also have when you learn to recognize these things, the model building gets a lot easier because you have to actually draw much fewer things because of tools like the mirror tool. So go through your model and identify the parts that you actually need to build and the parts that you can just copy from a part that you've already built. When you're ready, you can move on to the next video tutorial. We'll begin with the base of the shipping container. Now I'm just going to use my orbit tool to move around so I get a better view of my work area. And all I'm going to do is use the rectangle tool and I'm going to click somewhere on the base and then not click again. To enter precise dimensions, what you need to do is click, start drawing, and then before you click the end point, you can enter dimensions. I'm going to enter 8 feet, 7 inches, comma, 40.5 feet, and then hit enter. And you can see in the lower right hand corner, there are the dimensions that I entered. Now, as you can see, I have the basis for my shipping container. I got my dimensions just from measuring the SketchUp model that is already available. Now, I know that this has a 7 inch tall base, so to extrude this into a 7 inch tall 3D form, all I need to do is click the push-pull tool on the left side and hover over the form until I get that dot pattern. And I'm just going to click and drag, and then before clicking again, I'm just going to type 7 quotes for inches and hit enter. And now I have a 7 inch tall platform that is seven or is 8 feet 7 inches wide 
and 40.5 feet long. The next thing I need to do is I remember I have posts in all four corners that help support the box. So I'm just going to draw those and again I have pre-measured those so I happen to know that they are 6 by 6 or actually 7 by 7 but we'll be drawing 6 by 6 because an inch extends the other direction. All I need to do is click in the corner and drag and again I want precise dimensions so I'm going to type 6 quotes for inches comma 6 quotes and enter and there I have one. Now I'm just going to pan over to my other corner and do the same thing. 6 inches comma 6 inches and enter. Now I'm not going to do the other two corners if you'll remember when I was talking about symmetry in the first video, I'm going to copy these corners later on and flip them over to the other side. Just less work. I am, however, going to finish these by drawing lines in. And if I zoom in here, let's see if I can center this in the middle of the page for you. I'm going to use my pencil tool and start drawing a line. So I just click at the end point and drag down. Now you'll see that my line is blue, which means it's snapping to the up-down or blue axis. Now I have a little cube. I'm just going to orbit around, zoom out, pan over to the other side, get another little orbit here so I can see both sides, and I'm going to do the same thing. You can see that it's blue, click, click, blue, if you accidentally draw one off, that's not a big deal. Just use your erase tool and click directly on the line. It'll take care of it for you. Now, these corner pieces extend about an inch beyond the rest of the form. So I'm going to use my push-pull tool and again click and start dragging. And just type one inch and hit enter. Same thing with the other side. One inch, enter. Again, I'm going to orbit back to the other side. Should have done this earlier, but. And just push pull tool, get the dot pattern, drag one inch, enter. And again, you can look in the lower right hand corner to see what you've typed before you hit enter. Now I can zoom to extents and see my whole form. Looking good so far. Now the next piece I need is a full wall, and I know that wall has ribs, so I am going to create one rib and then copy it along a path. But the first thing I need to do is simply draw the first rib. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here, again pan to get it better centered in my window. And I know, since I measured, that it starts one 0.5 inches back away from the edge of the bottom plinth there. And I know the flat or the longer flat part extends one foot and five and seven sixteenths inches. So I'm just going to go five space seven slash sixteen inches and hit enter. Now you'll notice before I hit enter there that it was green, which means it was snapping to the green axis, keeping everything at right angles for me. SketchUp is really helpful in that it will snap to different axes for you. That's normally helpful, but right now I need to make an angle. So I'm going to have to make my own axis. To do that, I'm going to click on the Protractor tool and hover over my endpoint. And you'll see that it's that my protractor tool is snapping to the red axis which is perpendicular to the green so I'm going to click there for a starting point and then I need to twist this 28.2 degrees so again you can see in the bottom right hand corner that it's telling me what angle I'm twisting at so I'm just going to type 28.2 and hit enter and click and there I have a guideline all set up for me and now I can draw my line. So just click there and click to the end point. Now my next dimension is 
three inches and one sixteenth. So three space one divided by sixteen quotes, enter. And there's that. And now I need another angle to complete my rib. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab my protractor tool, make sure that it's on the blue plane there, click at the click on the red axis and rotate that to 28.2 degrees and hit enter and there I have my other guideline. Now I know eventually I'm going to need one more additional guideline that's at 90 degrees or that is parallel to the edge here so I'm just going to go ahead and create that guideline for myself right now. I'm just typing in 90 degrees and hitting enter. So now I have my guidelines all set up and I can finish drawing my rib form. Finish there. All right. Now I have half a rib, but it does have a thickness. So I am going to offset what I have already drawn to create a material that has thickness. To do this, I need to select all four parts that I have already drawn. To do this, choose your select tool and click on the first item or the first line that you drew. Then to select more than one item, hold the shift key down and you see that you get a nice little plus minus right next to your pointer. I'm going to add my other edges you'll see that I have all four selected. Let's say that I didn't want to add that last one. I could just click it again to deselect. As it happens to be, I do want that selected, so I'll reselect it again there. Then you can release and choose the offset tool, which is this tool right under the follow me and two below the push pull tool. I'm just going to click the offset tool and then all I need to do is click on the edge and drag and you see in the lower right hand corner it's telling me how far I'm going. I'm gonna try get, I don't know, three sixteenths. I feel like a quarter inch is kind of thick for that. And there we go. Now I have, if I click off here, I have two edges that I will eventually be able to close to make my final shape. Now when I zoom into the rib itself here, I see I'm going to have some issues. I will eventually need to close this form so that it can become a solid rib. And I can use the push-pull tool to pull it into 3D life. To close this, I want it to match up with this end, since I'm going to be repeating it along as a wall. So I need to do some figuring in advance. I think I'm going to draw myself another guideline here. Use my protractor tool, click on the edge, red line, type in 90 degrees and hit enter. There you go. Now I have another guideline and I can zoom in a little bit more here. Alright. This line's not really working for me, so I'm going to redraw a line and I'll show you one more mode of snapping to directions that SketchUp has. I'm going to use my pencil tool to draw a line. And I'm going to click at one end. And then I'm going to hover over this line a little bit. And then when I drag it back, you'll see that my line turned to a magenta color. And that lets me know that it's running parallel to the other line, um, which would be the line that I hovered over, which is what you want when you're trying to make a consistently thick material. Now I'm just going to finish out this shape. And if I hover over it with the push-pull tool, I can see that it's a closed shape because only the shape that I drew is highlighted. So I'm just going to pan back out here, or zoom out and then pan. And it looks like everything's closed here. I'm just going to double check one more time, make sure that corner piece doesn't light up. Yep, nope, I'm good to go. So now what I can do, I'm going to orbit and zoom out a little bit here. Well, I need to be close enough. but. I'm going to just pull this rib into 3D life. So again, I just start pushing and pulling, and then I'm going to bring it up 7.9 feet and hit, oh, I typed it wrong, 7.9 feet and hit enter. Now I can zoom out and orbit and do a little panning. 
and you can see that I have a rib all ready to go.